Today we're going to talk a little bit about parallel circuits. We'll discuss the definition of parallel circuits, and we'll also talk a little bit about the parallel resistance formula. So let's get started. We're going to start with a brief review of series circuits. Then we'll go into a definition of what parallel circuits are. We'll talk about why we care about parallel circuits, what makes them important. We'll discuss the weird thing about parallel resistance. We will go into a parallel resistance formula. Then we will do an example of a parallel circuit and find the resistance for that parallel circuit. And finally, we'll do a recap of what we learned today. So let's start with a brief review of series circuits. Remember, series means end to end. So the end of one series component is connected to the beginning of the next component. The end of that component is connected to the beginning of the third component, and so on. This is one example of a series component, a series circuit. You can see that R1 is connected to D1, D1 is connected to C1, and so on. So these components are all connected in series. The total resistance in a series circuit is just the sum of all of the individual resistors. If all of these components were resistors, then the total resistance would be R1 plus R2 plus R3, and so on, for as many resistors as you have in the circuit. With series circuits, more resistors means more resistance. Kind of makes intuitive sense. When you have more resistors, the current has to flow through more things. That makes it more difficult for the current to flow, so you have more overall resistance. But we'll see in a minute that that's not how parallel resistors work. So what is a parallel circuit? Well, in common usage, parallel means side by side, and that applies to circuits as well. So this is an example of parallel components in a circuit. You can see that the resistor, the diode, and the capacitor are all side by side. Now, specifically, when we're talking about um, circuits, the start of every component has to be connected to the start of every other component, and the end of every component has to be connected to the end of every other component in order for it to truly be a parallel circuit. So why do we care about parallel circuits? Well, most circuits include some elements that are in parallel, and if we want to understand these circuits and also design our own circuits, then we really need to understand how components behave when they are in parallel. Now let's talk about a weird aspect of parallel resistors. With parallel resistors, the more resistors you put in parallel, the less resistance you actually end up with. Now, this seems counterintuitive. You have more resistors, but less resistance. And it, it, it doesn't make sense at first, but let's think about it like this. Imagine that the electricity flowing through your circuit is like water flowing through a stream. If all of that water has to go through one narrow little section, it's going to have a hard time flowing there. But now imagine that there's an earthquake and suddenly another gap opens up right next to the first one. Now the water has two different ways that it can travel. So some of it can go down the original path and another portion of the water can go down this new path. Well, the water's going to have an easier time flowing because it has two pathways that it can take. It doesn't all have to go through the same spot. That's the way that parallel circuits work. When you put elements in parallel, you give electricity multiple paths that it can take, and so it's easier for the electricity to flow. In fact, in a parallel circuit, the equivalent resistance of the whole circuit will always be less than the smallest resistor in that circuit. So you might be wondering how to actually calculate the total resistance for a parallel circuit. So here's the parallel resistance formula. It says that 1 over the total resistance equals 1 over the first resistance, plus 1 over the second resistance, plus 1 over the third resistance, and so on. And this formula works for any number of resistors you have, whether it's 1, 2, 3, or as many as you want. So you can use this formula for any type of uh, parallel resistance calculation. So let's use this parallel resistance formula on an example circuit. Imagine you had a circuit like this. You've got three resistors in parallel, a 50 ohm, 50 ohm, and a 100 ohm, and you want to know the equivalent resistance for this circuit. In other words, you want to know if you put a meter 
to this circuit and you attached one lead to the top and one lead to the bottom, how much resistance would that meter measure? Well, the parallel resistance formula says that 1 over the total resistance is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 here. So in this case, that's 1 over 50 ohms plus 1 over 50 ohms plus 1 over 100 ohms. So that comes out to be um, 0.02 plus 0.02 plus 0.01. So when we add these all together, that is um, 0.05. So our total is 1 over 0.05. So that comes out to be 20 ohms. So in other words, the equivalent resistance for this circuit is 20 ohms. So let's do a brief review of what we just learned. We found out that the definition of a parallel circuit is that the parallel components connect at their tops and their bottoms. We said that the parallel resistance formula is 1 over R total equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 plus 1 over however many resistors you have. And finally, the total resistance for any parallel circuit is less than the smallest resistance in that circuit. So that's a little bit about parallel resistors. I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.